Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be working, some guys have asked me for this for a long time, so I'm going to be working on a subscriber request uh, today, and one of those requests was to take and show how I make graving chisels or engravers, uh, or gravers, or however you want to take and call them. Uh, this is what I use, it is a garage door coil spring, and this is what I make my gravers out of. So I'm not going to show you, I've already done videos in the past, I'll put a link in the description down below uh, to those, and at the end of this video, there'll be like those little end card things that you see uh, that where you can jump and look at other videos uh, on how to straighten coil spring. I'm not going to do that today, I'm just going to, I'll already have it straightened out, and I'm just going to show you the proper, uh, you know, grinding techniques, so to speak, uh, for this to make these little gravers and the results thereof. So, also, I will also show you how I take and harden and temper these things. Uh, so, that should be of use to you. So, stick around. Thank you all for watching this video, and uh, let's get to it. All right, so we're here at the belt sander here, and I'm trying to get you guys to where you can be able to see what I'm doing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure the end of our coil spring is nice and squared off. And then we are going to grind essentially two bevels, one on the left and one on the right, meeting in the middle. So essentially creating almost like a chisel tip, if you will, or a screwdriver. So there's the first bevel, then we'll flip it over, I'm going to refine that and do the second bevel on this piece here. Now you're going to see some bluing and some stuff going on at the tip. That's not to be worried about at this stage because obviously we all we're going to do is end up cleaning this up later on and uh, heat treating it. So there really is no point in uh, worrying about the bluing at this stage. We just want to take and grind this to shape and create ourselves that chisel tip like what you see here. Now we're going to pick one of the sides after I finish cleaning up a little further here, kind of monkeying around with it, trying to get both sides even, just like you see here. Now we're going to pick one of the sides to go with, and we're going to take and grind approximately a 30 degree bevel. So we're going to grind on this, we're going to put a 30 degree bevel in it, and then we're going to put a 60 degree bevel. And I think I'm saying that in the correct orientation. 30 degree bevel is not a whole lot of bevel at all. And then a 60 degree be bevel will be a lot more bevel to it. Or a lot duller of a point if you will. Now we'll just go ahead and add in our little 60 degree bevel. And there you are. There's a graver. Now, I will come back at a later point and go ahead and flatten off the bottom, but that's essentially what you need. Okay, everyone, here we are at the fire. So, I've got my little engraver tool here done. I probably won't be able to focus on it. It looks a little dark in here. But you guys can see that done there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the coal forge. Perfect thing for this. And you can also do this with a torch. I'm just going to set this right above the flames, okay? So you don't need a lot of hot on this. You just need to take and get this hot enough. Now, it's a little interesting on this small of material, uh, the actual heat treatment process, because just the air in of itself can be enough to cool the tip of this rapidly. And you'll have to do a little bit of experimenting with the coil spring that you have. But essentially what I do is I bring up the tip of this thing to non-magnetic, like you would normally, okay? And then, you know, this coil spring here, I have found not really a need to have to take and quench it. So I won't be quenching it here, but I'll just pull it out, and I'll let, I can cool that down naturally to a point, to where the tip of it is no longer at a critical temperature, and then I can cool the rest of the tool. So I'll take this up a little bit hotter. 
About the time you check this with a magnet, you'll have to do some tests first. About the time you check this with a magnet is about the time that, you know, it's already cooled off. But there it is. We wait for that color change right on the tip. And now I just cool it off completely. Okay? So, that's done. Let's go over to the bench and see what happened there. Look it up. So, as you can see here, it's kind of got some of that graying there, which is what I've been told is the indication of martensite being formed. Now, I'm once again, I'm not a metallurgist, and I don't really care about a whole lot about all that. Um, I do know that this thing's hard now as a rock, but it's not very pretty. So how are we going to clean this up? The easiest way to clean this up is actually get your piece of just a little piece of sandpaper, some like 320 grit or something like that, and just kind of clean it up on that to just kind of give it all a little bit of a sharpening. Make sure you keep your bevels and things like that. But this tool here is essentially ready to use. Now, if you find that this tip snaps in work here, you just definitely just don't want to take and quench it. Because once again, there's a real possibility of this tip here getting over overheated and therefore having a large grain structure right at the tip and it'll just snap right off. Uh, and that's obviously not what you want to do. Uh, so all you have to do is take and do a little test with it. So the next step is to take and find a length that is comfortable for you to hold. Now, I will recommend that you make this length as short as possible on your gravers, especially when you're working with this thin a material, because it'll have a tendency to want to flex or bow under the hammer blows. You want it to be just long enough, just long enough, this portion of it, the cutting portion of it, uh, to be able to hold on to. So that's all you want this to be, is just long enough that you can actually take and hold on to the piece and then tap the other end. So I usually go right around three inches or so, uh, three to four inches, well, about that spread right there is all I go. And it's going to look like you're almost hitting your knuckles, but it's just enough above there that you can set this on the piece, on the work piece, and take and carve out your little furrow. So let's, uh, I'll go ahead and just cut this off. Oh, how do I cut this off? I just use a pair of bolt cutters. So we'll just cut this off. I'll grind the back end, leave the back end a little bit to radius it off. And uh, let's just carve a piece of metal and see how this holds up. Okay, here we are. This is just a scrap piece of mild steel bar. And we're going to see how this thing cuts. So far, so good. It's really nice and sharp. So as you can see, it can do a little bit of uh, engraving there. I'm checking the tip. It doesn't appear to have any problems with chipping. So that's good. That's what we're wanting. We don't want it to have any sort of problems with chipping. So apparently this method worked okay for it. It is pushing out a little chip as it goes, which that's exactly what we're wanting. So I'm just gonna do a little simple design here, a little tree branch design. We might get into some engraving videos at a later date, and you guys can pick, you know, maybe something that you guys would like to see me do, and you can drop me in the comment section down below what type of design you'd like me to engrave, maybe we can put that on a project. That would work well. So, yeah, so we'll just we'll check the tip here after I get done playing around. It is peeling out material. I sense, yeah. yep, tip's still in good shape, so that's a good thing. That's what we're looking for. Um, so yeah, so you guys get the ideal here. But 
so a lot of this is the technique. more than anything else. But you guys can see that it obviously lays out some lines there. So, once again, we'll take a, a little closer look at it here. Get out of the way. There's my little tree branch thing done so you can see how handy this is. Yeah, so the tips held up fairly well. There was one little piece here it looks like came off. Now that I got it under the camera here. Yeah. There was a little bit of chipping. So it could be used to be softened ever so slightly. But that will probably take place whenever I touch it back up on the belt sander. Anyways. That's how you make your... That's how I make my gravers. Um, pretty simple. Nothing to it. Not really any forging beyond uh, straightening out the coil spring. Here's another one of mine that I've made, and I just use this to complete a chasing of a hammer. And you see I got it cleaned up. It's got a little thicker profile to it. I wanted to attempt to make a little thinner profile. So yeah, so now you know. That's how I make them. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give that, that thumbs up. And like I always say, we'll catch you on the next one. God bless you.